All right, Spaceflight Insider fans, well, if you haven't figured it out yet, we are in the middle of a mock-up for the International Space Station, and I am joined by none other than Rick Mastracchio, NASA astronaut. Nice to meet you. NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio shares insights and in his role in the development of NASA's new Orion spacecraft. So talk to us a bit about how NASA, and with a focus on the astronauts, is transitioning from shuttle and from those spacecraft to Orion. Well, for many years, NASA has operated in low Earth orbit. Now Orion is going to go beyond low Earth orbit, so that's the big difference. We haven't left low Earth orbit since 1972, the last Apollo mission. Right. So that's the big change. So how, do the, how does the uh, vehicle change? What are the des change, design changes to the vehicle mm -hmm. such that it can go beyond low Earth orbit? How is the crew going to operate? How is mission control going to operate? Uh, some of the changes I foresee is we're going to have a probably a much smarter vehicle than we had on Space Shuttle or Soyuz and Space Station in terms really? of it'll be more autonomous. The vehicle needs to be able to react to uh, failures on its own immediately since mission control will have quite a bit of time delay once it goes beyond the moon and onto Mars. Of course, the crew has to be more autonomous in themselves. They have to be able to respond to the failures. They have to be better trained. They have to be have the right insight into the vehicle and the right procedures to react to these failures. And mission control, with the long delays as we go further and further, it's going to be, uh, I think, have to understand that they have to take a smaller role and kind of looking over the shoulders of the astronauts and the, uh, and the vehicle. What is the astronaut office and astronauts in particular doing to get Orion ready to support that role and to, to say, okay, well, let's, let's, let's think, think about what's going to happen in the future and what will we need? I mean, what are the things, the unknowns that you guys are kind of trying to plan for so that Orion will be ready to support these missions? Right, and that's kind of why the astronaut office is involved in the design and development of the Orion vehicle. Is one of the things we bring to the table is we try to think about the contingency abort type situations right. where the vehicle has had a major malfunction and it may not even be designed to get the crew safely home, but we're, we also we still want to give the crew a fighting chance. So we're looking at things as how, if the crew has a major malfunction out on their way to the moon and it takes five or six days to get back home. Can the crew operate this vehicle in such a way to get home safely? What are the resources we need to give them? What's the equipment we need to give them? What's the training we need to give them to get back home? Not just, a lot, not just rely on the redundancy built into the vehicle, but try to be clever to come up with the dissimilar redundancies, if you will. Uh, for example, you know, the best example I can come up with right now is uh, if you're on your way out to the moon and the vehicle loses pressure and the crew is on their way out to the moon, it's going to take five, six days to get back home. Well, we're going to rely on the spacesuits. The crew is going to don their spacesuits, and they're going to basically live in their spacesuits for five or six days until, ve until the vehicle can get them back home safely. That's, not, that's something you have to worry about in low Earth orbit. In low Earth orbit, if there's a major malfunction in a space shuttle or Soyuz or space station, you could be somewhere on the Earth within an hour or two. When you're on your way to the moon, it takes days to get home. When you're on your way to Mars, it would take months to get home. So these are the kind of things that the astronaut office brings to the table. We look for these contingency operations where we can use our ingenuity to tr try to figure out ways to get the crew home safely. Annette Haysbrook, Orion Assistant Manager for Integration, underscored Mastracchio's feelings when she shared this with Spaceflight Insider. The, the basic process is the same. Obviously, the further away you go from Earth, the more, in a sense, the astronauts need to be independent, need to be able to... Um, Self-sustain. Yes, yeah, self-sustain manage, repair their vehicle with less and less immediate ground involvement. We try to only tie up the crew with the required maintenance that they physically have to put their hands on so that we get a lot more um, control from the flight controllers and they do a lot of the reconfiguration and I'll say anomaly response, not emergencies and warnings, the major ones, but you know, lower level, what we call caution warnings, off nominal scenarios, you can fix a lot of that through commands from the ground. How are the astronauts kind of starting to look at being, uh, you guys are all multitasking, you speak numerous languages, you have multiple degrees, um, but you're going to have to learn to be farmers, doctors, uh, repairmen, 
on the way because there's not going to be anyone that's going to be an hour away. So are you guys already looking at, at ways to, to get the astronauts ready to handle those those very uh, you know on site you know autonomous roles? Right, and I think space station is already preparing us for that. As part of space station training, we are trained as doctors and dentists and. Uh, I mean, I was even an MRI technician up on orbit giving each other MRIs. So we are highly trained in the medical fields for emergency, um, emergency events. We also do a lot of maintenance on space station. We are always, we're taking hardware apart and repairing it. Uh, often the toilet was the biggest problem, CO2 scrubbers, things like that. So we are definitely, like you say, we're medical officers, we're, we're the maintenance man, we are, we are maybe have to be farmers when we eventually go on to Mars and things like that. So I think the space station is, is preparing us for that type of thing. So I don't think that's going to change much. I think, yeah, the crew members that we have today and we will have in the future will be well trained for that. The challenge is going to be mass and volume. You're trying to go to Mars. Right. Space station is a million pounds of hardware with an incredible amount of volume incredible amount of spare parts, complete tool sets for every tool you can imagine, a medical kit that's you know beyond imagination, every, every pharmaceutical and every medical device that you can imagine is up there. Mastrachia went on to state that a number of hurdles remain before NASA can take those first steps in making humanity a multi-planet species, something that Haysbrook also noted. To me, what they need to know is continuing to push the boundaries of what we know and don't know. Um, you know, you think all the way back to the early explorers. Why did Columbus cross the ocean? Why did Lewis and Clark go to the west coast? Why did we go to the moon? We are continuing to push our boundaries so we learn. We are a learning people and we, we have to continue to learn in order to grow and discover new things. So I think that's important. And secondly, um, the understanding that this is a an enterprise of people with the passion that they all have. At the astronauts, there'll be four, maybe four astronauts in the capsule, but it will be the hundreds and thousands of people that have put their life and their passion into making sure what they have done is exact and correct so that that expedition and, and mission can be successful.